people just had to use anxious on her own. Yeah, she also, you know, me this morning. It's hard because I don't have, I don't have too much control over it. So they're still not being paid correctly. They're not being paid enough. I haven't even checked. Yeah. So she gave me a whole long list of it, and I'll send it over to Sue and them. But I feel bad because I can't go back and back to the system. Well, the, the, the other thing is, is if this was a problem before, they we got this money. Yeah, and she, she's getting checks now. Yeah. So she's been getting checks for a couple of months now, but they're still doing the tax like they should have been doing. I'm just worried about the other one like over a week ago. So. Well, I'm sorry about that. I, mean, I thought we could do this just like a moment ago. I don't know. Yeah. Which makes it be something simple. I know. But I feel like me. It's like, oh, you have to pay rent. No, no absolutely. I mean, so, and, that's, and that, that changes, and you've done everything based on that. That's what happened. So, um, <coughs> this certainly was not a potential thing. I mean, it was yeah. meant to be a health, and, you know, it is, it is a big health. It is a big health. It is a big health. It's all around these. Um, Marguerite. Yeah.
Med students, other students here taking advantage of it. All right, Tulane, uh, you should be able to hear us now. And uh, the rest of the group is down at Tulane. Great. Rachel, sorry for uh, missing. So we're just going through introductions that you see here on the screen, I hope, kind of what we're looking for. Are you guys set up to be able to share? Yes. Great. See, we've got three TL1 trainees down at Tulane, and they're doing rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first. <laughs> if y'all like to come, like, one at a time, come up a little closer and introduce yourself. So, yeah, and you can see the camera at the top. This is it right here. Perfect. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> oh, we lost. We can't hear. We lost the audio. We lost the audio. There we go. We got gotcha. you. Hi everyone. My name is Tiffany Call. I am in uh, the M at Wayne University. I, my mentor is Dr. Prescott Dininger in the Louisiana Research Center. The biology of mobile elements, which are the Expression profile in a variety of different tumors. Um, my non academic area of interest, I play the flute and then the volunteer New Orleans Orchestra here. And I also like photography. My favorite tool is I like the potatoes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel, um, Rachel Sable. I'm in the MD-PhD program here and in the CL1 fellowship. Um, my mentor is Bruce Spinell, and we use adipocin cells for looking at the effect of obesity on breast cancer and specifically cognitive involved in initiating metastasis. Um, my non-academic area of interest, I'm in the New Orleans Volunteer Orchestra Choir. And my book was Harry Potter. Thanks, Nikki. Hello. Very tall. <laughs> uh, my name is Margaret Tosky. I'm also in the MD-PhD program. Uh, I'm very old. I'm old. Uh, mentor is Dr. Matthew Burrow, from Bridget Collins Burrow. I'm still not sure. My research area is uh, finding novel therapeutic targets of negative breast cancer. We were to establish h to drug xenografts here at Tulane. Um, and I'm on a uh, play soccer. I'm from Blue Moon. And, uh, my favorite children's game is Blue Moon. I think we made that up. But. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> And Rachel and Tanette? Sure. I can turn it towards you, Dr. Wood, if you like. Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm Rachel Ruiz. I'm the senior program coordinator here at Tulane. Um, so, help if I need anything. Work, I've been working closely with Ryan, get everybody set up. Christine. You didn't say your children's book. Oh, sorry. Um, let's go with 
the good I would. Yes. You're good. Um, several roles here at Tulane, but relevant to the food director of one program. Professor of Council and Technology. My research interest is in medication adherence, which relates to the best medication. My outside interest, I don't know how to talk to those. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Tulane. And so as we go through, as you'll see every Friday, uh, there'll be opportunities where they're going to present. You'll learn more about them, uh, but they'll be joining us every week as part of the program. Um, so I'm going to let's go with uh, Dr. Kuhn. We're, gonna, we're just introducing ourselves. I'm David Kimberlin, uh, pediatric infectious diseases, and uh, and mentor for Mills, who's sitting down the table to the right. And non-academic area of interest in children's book? Um, I do pediatric infectious diseases, virology primarily in terms of academic interest, antiviral therapies, uh, natural history of, of herpes virus infections and, and treatment of it. Um, outside interests, uh, college football, so it's going to be a good time of year. Uh, and uh, children's books, I love um, uh, Good Night Moon. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eve Markovitz. I um, assist with a lot of the admin work, so if you're a T32 or TL1, I'm sure we will email all year. Um, I, so I'm kind of cheating. I don't have a lot to, a lot of bullet points to hit. Um, not academic area of interest. Um, I enjoy, um, what do I enjoy? I enjoy hiking, and I enjoy, oh, I'm a fantasy football league for three years in a row now. And uh, my favorite children's book is don't let the pigeon ride the bus. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just keep going around this way. Okay, uh, I'm Dan Shu. I'm an assistant professor in department surgery. I'm colorectal by trade. And uh, I am at K-12, a scholar method this year. My mentor is uh, Mona Food, And my research area uh, is in uh, disparities, understanding disparities in surgery in terms of surgical outcomes and trying to find ways to reduce that. Not academic interest, uh, I'm a big uh, biker. I love road biking and mountain biking. And they have a children's book. I have two kids. We are now reading Calvin and Hobbes as part of the series. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Gareth Dutton. I'm an associate professor in preventive medicine. I do research mostly in the space of obesity interventions, behavioral lifestyle interventions for weight loss and weight loss <coughs> maintenance. Um, non academic interest, ironically, as an obese researcher, I like to cook, but healthy stuff, of course. <laughs> yeah, I really like to, I like to grow out, actually, and watch college football. Um, my favorite kids book, so almost every night I have to read, so it was my favorite and becoming less so over time is the Grumble book. It's a page turn. <laughs> Emily Lourdes. Sarah? My name is Sarah Rutland. Um, I'm a T32 pre doctoral um, trainee. My mentor is Elizabeth Baker in the Department of Sociology, and my research area is primarily in racial disparities in health with an emergent interest in unmet health care needs over time. Um, I like to ballroom dance in my spare time competitively and socially. Um, my favorite dance socially is salsa and competitively. And my favorite children's book are the Little House on the Prairie books. Hi, I'm Bob Kimberly. I'm the PI of the CCTS at UAB. Um, my research area is primarily in immunogenomics and um, how our heritage contributes to disease manifestations. Not academic areas of interest. I think I'll join you, Gareth, in cooking, but uh, hiking and water skiing. And my favorite uh, children's book is actually a series. I'm still a fan of the Dr. Seuss series. Uh, I'm Jeff Foster. I've submitted <coughs> Brian, Eve, and uh, Dr. Sag. Uh, I guess our research areas are anything rheumatology, uh, yeah, osteoporosis, uh, primarily. Um, not academic. I play a lot of golf when I can. And then I do not have children, but my favorite children's book growing up was Where the Wild Things Are. <laughs> so. I'm not a 
and I'm one of the um, second year rheumatology fellows. I'm one of T32. My mentor is Dr. Sack. Um, my main interest around more of outcome measures of working uh, on the outs right now with Dr. Sack, um, mainly kind of um, seeing if the Fitbit can capture some of the gaps there um, for us. Um, very exciting. Um, my um, non-academic area of interest, I'm a mother of four, so I'm pretty much taking care of this work. <laughs> but I think I like the cook too. <laughs> and then my favorite uh, children's book, I, I agree with Dr. Kimber and Dr. Seuss series. I'm uh, Bruce Julian. I'm a T32 pre-doctoral trainer. I'm in the Department of Sociology, Medical Sociology uh, student. Uh, my mentor is Patricia Trentia, and uh, my research area is um, depressive symptomatology of uh, immigrants, children of Caribbean immigrants. Uh, my non-academic area of interest, um, writing and doing performance poetry, spoken word, uh, and favorite children's book, uh, Alan Cox. My name is Naveed Farouk. I'm a third year medical student. My mentor is Dr. Kirsten Kennedy and Dr. Willard. Um, I'm going to be kind of looking at clinical quality measures in, uh, in a hospital-based practice, trying to evaluate you know, how, to, how to measure quality of medicine. Um, my non-academic area of interest is a different kind of football, is the one, you know, soccer. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. I'm also in a uh, <laughs> for that. Um, champion two years running, just want to put it out there. Um, my favorite book is also um, probably where the wild takes over. Um, my name is David Chaplin. I'm in the Department of Microbiology. I'm the director of the Training Academy part of the CCTS and interact in many ways with your programs. Um, I've been fortunate to have some really good mentors over my years. I've never had a malignant mentor. I've had non-participant <laughs> mentors. Um, and I'm actually really interested in the whole issue of how to build a stronger mental community. And I hope some of you will take advantage of training opportunities to learn best practices in mentoring as you go through your programs. And you can know that for yourself as you go forward, but also um, maybe influence your mentors. Uh, from the bottom up. Um, I'm an immunologist and really interested in molecular mechanisms of asthma. Um, Non-academically, I love to watch soccer. I used to play. can't run anymore. But, um, and my favorite children's books from the way back was there was a series called Tom Swift and His Flying Lab that got me interested <laughs> in space and science. Nancy Drew is the other part of this. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Quite different. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jean Lambert. I'm uh, with the CCTS. Um, I haven't ever had a formal mentor, but I've had a lot of um, people who have mentored me over the years. Um, I used to do research in osteoporosis, um, arthritis, and um, glioblastoma multiform. Um, Non-academic, um, I enjoy college football, and um, my favorite book um, to read to my niece when she was little um, was Brown Bear, Brown Bear, Brown Bear, and um, one of my favorite series was Dr. Seuss. Yeah, I'm going to pause real quick just because Jean's got a phenomenal history. Tell real quickly about Antarctica. <laughs> Um, I had the opportunity um, to spend four months in Antarctica. Um, I was um, able to go and assist some of the researchers that were there doing everything that you can imagine from the test tubes to letting balloons off to um, do the, you know, measurements and all kinds of everything in between. Um, I was able to take helicopter rides um, to uh, places off base and um, see what other investigators were doing and um, see some spectacular things that other 
people are not able to see. So I've been very blessed in that way. I'm Pat Patricia, and I'm a professor in the School of Nursing. Um, I work with the VAPS program, the VA Quality Scholars Fellowship Program. I'm the co-director uh, with uh, Dr. Carlos Estrada. Um, <clears throat> I still have mentors, and I guess my mentor right now would be Karen Manessis in the School of Nursing, and uh, possibly Dean Harper as well. Uh, my research area is nursing, <coughs> nurse staffing in hospitals and how that contributes to quality care. Um, I spent 26 years in the Army Nurse Corps, so I get a lot of funding from the military to conduct my studies there. And my latest study is looking at nurse staffing and the practice environment on inpatient hospital units in the military and their effect on mortality, failure to rescue, and readmissions. Um, my non-academic area of interest is similar to Emily's, and it's uh, fiber arts. We're spinning wool into yarn. And there's actually a group here in Birmingham that meets monthly um, and shares their experiences with that kind of thing. Um, and she's the one who turned me on to that, so that was pretty cool. Uh, so you never know who you meet and what their interests are. My favorite children's book is Fox in Socks by Dr. Seuss, and it's a tongue twister. And my daughter and I had that memorized when she was little, but I don't remember it now. <laughs> Um, my name is Carla Amos. I'm a fourth year in the Medical Clinical Psychology Program. I'm on the TL1 um, Fellowship. Uh, my mentor is Dr. Rajesh Khanna, and we study um, neuroimaging and neural correlates of cognitive processing and response to intervention. Um, and I'm currently working with individuals on the autism spectrum. Um, non academic interests would be professional football, go Panthers. <laughs> and my favorite book is uh, Harry Potter. It's not a children's book. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Anthony Campbell, and I'm a T32 uh, fellow. I'm a medical sociologist and a clinical social worker. And my mentor is Dr. Julie Locker. Uh, my research area, I'm interested in uh, the impact of uh, social factors such as social relationships and social support on health outcomes, uh, especially uh, the use of uh, preventive health screenings. Um, Non-academic area of interest, I love to eat, um, for those who like to cook, <laughs> and I like to travel, photography, and I'm into um, seven-year-old girls softball right now, uh, and my favorite uh, children's book is The Grouchy Ladybug. Um, hey, my name is Aditi Johnny. Um, I'm a fourth year med student and I'm one of the TL1 trainees. Um, and I'm working, my mentor is um, Craig Elmetz in the Department of Dermatology. Um, and we're currently studying um, different therapeutic measures like immunomodulatory therapies and the prevention of both melanoma and non melanoma skin cancers. Um, my non-academic area of interest, so I dabble in ceramics, so a couple days a week I work in a pottery studio and make different things on a pottery studio. Um, and my favorite children's book, I really like the Nancy Drew series. I'm Elena Gibson, I'm also a fourth year medical student in the TL1 program. Um, my mentor is Isabel Skransky, and the part of preventive medicine, and we are currently looking at disparity in HPV screening and also cervical cancer outside of non-academic. My area of interest currently, I'm into embroidery, and my favorite children's book would be a series of unfortunate events. <coughs> hey everybody, I'm Marissa Gowie. I'm an assistant professor of pediatrics. I'm a new K-12 scholar. Um, my research area, well, before I say that, my mentor is Garrett Dutton, he's over there. We both like to cook, apparently. <laughs> and something about obesity researchers. <laughs> um, uh, my research area is pediatric obesity interventions and determining factors that contribute to variability in treatment outcomes. Um, my non-academic area of interest is traveling, cooking, and baking. I don't know what it is about obesity, but um, and then favorite children's book is *The Giving Tree*. We're gonna, Laura, we're gonna have to give.
Um, hi everyone, my name is Laura Dover. I'm a PGY4 in the Department of um, Radiation Oncology uh, resident. And um, my area of research interest is um, early integration of palliative care into oncology care models. Um, and because of that, I've mentored from a couple of different um, rounds to help me melt that. So Dr. Marie Bacchidis um, with palliative care. And then also um, Dr. Gabrielle Rock, who's a medical oncologist here, um, involved with the lay patient navigator system. Um, so non-academic area of interest. Um, as my care as an audience, I love writing, non-academically, media, blogging, that sort of thing. Um, and my favorite children's book um, was the um, Bernstein Bears. Loved that series. <laughs> Um, I'm Audrey Wallace. I'm a PGY-5 in radiation oncology. Um, I'm uh, a first year T32 this year. My uh, mentors are Dr. Lepitan and Dr. Gabrielle Locke. I'm interested in um, looking at guidelines of important care in um, breast cancer patients and radiation usage at the end of life. Um, Non-academically, um, most of my time is consumed. Um, I'm helping put together um, a science uh, competition team for my son for the science Olympiad this year, so that's pretty much my, most of my time goes out of work. And my favorite children's book is one I had when I was a child. It's an old British book with like 365 stories, one for every day. Um, but I read to my first one, and now we're going through it with my second. Um, hi everyone, my name is Min Han. Um, I'm an MD-PhD student and also a TL1 trainee. And so as part of my main thesis project, we're looking at a novel process of this pathway. It's important in sperm and genocide communication. And our mentor there is uh, Michael Miller in the CDIP department. And as part of the TL1, I'm looking at how this pathway is involved in uh, varying cancer development and progression. And that for that, my mentor is with a Heron, who's a um, gynecology on, or yeah, gynecology oncologist. Um, and then for my non-academic areas of interest, um, all my free time kind of revolves around my job, so whatever she likes to do. Um, so I like hiking, camping, <laughs> that sort. But I'm actually really happy that someone else is interested in ballroom dancing. So I used to be a performance ballroom dancer. I've been trying to get in the community here in Birmingham for the last like There were 12 on campus. So I'm going to have to do that in detail. <laughs> my favorite children's book. I like the Sherlock Holmes uh, series of short stories. I'm not really sure that's such a children's book, but they're my favorites. So, good morning. I'm Mike Mugavero. Um, most folks will refer to me as Mugs, which is great. It's uh, informal and approachable. There's a lot of Mikes and Michaels on this campus. Um, so, for the last two years, I've been involved as Associate Director of the Corps. Um, uh, helping with the training program along with Emily Levitan and Sarah and I working closely with Ryan and Ken and Bob and will say this Friday morning has become by far my favorite hour of two hours of the week. Really enjoyed the time together. Um, in terms of mentors, uh, Mike Sack has been my content mentor for a long time. It's been a lot of years. Um, and increasingly now, I similar to Pat, I get uh, informal mentorship from my department chair, Seth Landefeld, also from folks like Ken and Bob in terms of different um, aspects of, of career development in different roles. My research focuses on HIV prevention and treatment in the health services uh, and outcome space. Um, personally focused on engagement and care and adherence to medications and increasingly working you know, with teams on big initiatives like ending HIV in Alabama, which is just fantastic and consumes a lot of time, but um, really great fun. Um, not academic area of interest. So my wife, who is Andrea Charrington, so some folks will know her and don't know that we're married because we have different last names, but she'll be here later. She's Canadian. And so all three of my children play ice hockey. So I've got a 12, 11, and 8-year-old that play ice hockey. So I started playing ice hockey at 40, which is good to challenge yourself at <laughs> older age. Um, um, so a lot of hockey, a lot of hockey. And then my favorite children's book probably has evolved now that my kids are older. I would say Harry Potter, number one. I've read it with all three of my kids, and it's just such a wonderful story. My name is Dustin Long. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Biostatistics here at UAB. Um, uh, I work with uh, various different groups, uh, specifically with the Center for Age Research with, with MUGS. Um, uh, I am currently being mentored by David Redden. Uh, so for those of you who know him, don't hold that against me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and he would tell me, he would say that himself. So, uh, I, uh, my research area, I, I'm in biostatistics, so a lot of our research has to do with what you all are doing and working with, with folks to uh, collaborate and making sure that methods and statistical things are, are appropriate. Uh, but personally, I, I'm working on different uh, spline models and uh, survival analysis. Um, uh, Non-academic area of interest, um, I, I, I like to eat, um, <laughs> and uh, I have I have a seven-year-old and a two-month-old, and so I'm doing lots of diaper changing. It's a very fun activity, um, <laughs> and uh, going to soccer games. And, and my favorite children's book is uh, called Hand and Fingers Thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I'm Matt Mefford. I'm joining the T32 program this year. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Epidemiology. Um, my primary mentor is Emily Lovetan. I also consider Paul Muntner one of my main mentors. Um, my focus uh, for research is mainly cardiovascular disease, so I focus on disparities. Uh, the main outcome that I focus on is heart failure, and I also look at different analytic methods for research designs. Um, and then non-academic area of interest, I really enjoy being outside, I enjoy watching any sports. I grew up in the Midwest, so basketball is probably my favorite. Um, and then I also play tennis quite a bit. Um, and then favorite children's book would probably have to be a Dr. Seuss book, Go Dog Go. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, good morning, my name is uh, Justin Moore. I'm a second year trainee in the Department of Health Services Administration on the T32. Um, my mentor is Dr. Robert Weech Maldonado, and my research interest is nursing home organizational performance, specifically financial inequality. Um, my non-academic area of interest is kind of, I really enjoy yard work. <laughs> uh, so if you ever need your yard mode or something like that, <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, probably my favorite children's book is Tiger is a Scared Cat. <laughs> hey, I'm Ahmed Iyer. I'm a new faculty in the Pulmonary and Critical Care Division. Uh, uh, my mentors are Marie Bakaitis and Mark Dransfield. Mark, Mark Dransfield from Pulmonary and Dr. Bakaitis from Palliative Care. My research area is studying how to or palliative care needs in COPD and designing an intervention that can improve quality of life and hopefully improve healthcare utilization. Uh, my non-academic area of interest, I've been at UAB since 2003, so all my training's been here, and so I guess cemented a Blazer for life status, but the a life Blazer football, Blazer athletics, I'm excited for the return, and um, college football is a big, big thing for me. My wife and I try to find a new restaurant around Birmingham every couple of weeks, and they're still surprised about what, what exists in the city even after 14 years. Um, favorite children's book when it's not trying to figure out what princess my three-year-old is. <laughs> and really, it's going to be either a very stinky alligator or grump fish. Um, so those are her two favorites right now. Okay, real quick and on, what was your scholarship to UAB originally? That was a, a piano scholarship. So I came here to study with uh, Ayaka Cosman in classical piano. I couldn't I didn't stay as a major the whole four years, but I studied in his studio in classical piano. So was, I still try to play for the medical school and did music therapy for the hospital. So it was fun to do that in undergrad. So we'll get you connected to the volunteer folks down yeah. at Tulane. Yeah. We'll get a we'll get a band together. Yeah, and the dancers. <laughs> My name's Sadia Dubi. I'm a new faculty in health medicine and also a T32 trainee. Um, my mentors are Marie Bakaitis and Cynthia Brown. Um, and my research area of interest is understanding the symptom burden and functional impairment in end stage liver disease to eventually uh, inform a palliative care intervention. Um, let's see, non academic area of interest. So um, I used to be way back when a professional. Uh, classical Indian music singer, um, and but that's been lost over the years. <laughs> um, but I recently got into improv uh, locally, so that's been a lot of fun. Um, the children's book, I used to like the boxcar children a lot. 
Um, and then recently, I found a book called Quantum Physics for Babies. So I think that's the <laughs> <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Ruby Bacardis, you've already heard that. <laughs> um, I'm a professor and the Riello Corn God Chair at the School of Nursing and in the Department of Medicine, I'm the Associate Director of the Center for Palliative and Supportive Care with Dr. Rob Tucker. Um, my, uh, I've had lots of mentors, um, <clears throat> I still do, um, they can't get rid of me. Um, <laughs> Uh, Dr. Tim Miles is a psychologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and we share um, a love of professional football, specifically the uh, New England Patriots. Now I know there's a lot of haters in the room. <laughs> so don't look at me because I also love the Red Sox. I know there's a lot of haters in the room. For that. Um, but um, and Betty Farrell, and I would say since I've been here, um, Dr. Rodney Tucker has really um, uh, been a great mentor for me in the administrative areas of palliative care. Uh, my area of uh, research uh, interest is the um, introduction of early palliative care to persons with serious illness and their family caregivers, particularly focused on underserved um, minorities and uh, rural uh, people. Um, let's see. So you already heard a little bit of a non-academic area of interest. There is a thing called professional football. I know many of you have not heard of it. Um, <clears throat> When I'm indoors, when I'm outdoors, I love uh, traveling and gardening um, and trying to master the uh, climate of Alabama and still grow flowers and vegetables. <laughs> um, so I have five grandchildren and I've had two uh, children. And so I have a very broad span of children book reading from the Garofalo to Mickey in the Night Kitchen to um, uh, if you give a mouse a cookie, and most recently, the uh, Hungry Caterpillar. Hi, good morning. I'm Isabel Scarinci. I'm in the Division of Preventive Medicine. I'm a behavioral scientist. I work mostly in cervical cancer and tobacco control uh, among the African Americans and Latinos, uh, and also uh, international work uh, as Associate <coughs> Director for Globalization and Cancer at the Art Cancer Center. Um, mentors, I have had a lot of mentors. Uh, I started my career in a program like this, uh, and uh, Emily Ramirez is still my mentor. Uh, so once you get a mentor early in your career, it is a good one. You never let that person go and have a lot of mentors here at UAB. At Partridge, Mount of Watt, that really have, have helped me in my career. Um, not academic interest, I have many. I'm a cook. I'm very involved with the international community here. We have a group that's a Fat Tuesday group that we get together to, to do things together. I'm the Honorary Council of Brazil. I uh, crochet, I knit, uh, and I love to be at the lake. So, in children's book, I was here thinking, all these books that I grew up in Brazil, so all my children's books are in Portuguese. <laughs> so, I do not know the translation in English, but I have a lot of them. Hi everyone, I'm, I'm Whitney Rice, and I am a second year postdoc in the ARC uh, T32 program, and I my primary mentors are Janet Turan in the uh, School of Public Health and Lent Turan in the Department of Psychology, but I've had the great benefit of being here at UAB and being mentored by plenty of others outside of those departments as well. Um, my, broadly, my research interests are in social and behavioral science approaches to uh, addressing disparities in HIV and sexual and reproductive health. Uh, specifically, the research projects that I've been involved in have sought to understand and address stigma and discrimination in those um, care settings. Uh, my non-academic areas of interest are also many, so I love um, science fiction, books, movies, um, TV shows. Um, but I also used to play soccer and tennis competitively, so I, I now like to watch more than I actually um, play both of those, but I, I like to do that as well. Um, and in terms of favorite children's book, I'm going to go with Harry Potter as well. 
Hey everyone, I'm Milka Offer. Um, I'm a third year medical student and I'm in the TL1 program. Dr. Kimberlin is my mentor and we're working on some um, HS, an HSC screening project and an asymptomatic congenital CMV project. Um, I love to travel. Um, I love my dog and cat. And my favorite children's books with a good dog, Carl, series. I'm Elise Oakland-Dassinger. I'm in the awkward name change phase, so you may see what I'm um, But I'm a clinical pharmacist and VA quality scholar. This is my second year. Um, a lot of my work within the VA obviously revolves around quality measurements. I do a lot of work for the pharmacy service, um, looking at different efficiency, waste, things like that. Uh, also working with their high dollar medications, uh, increasing kind of access and decreasing cost. Um, my research focus has mainly been around opioid use and surgery, um, and that's under the mentorship of Dr. Melanie Morris at UAB and the VA, um, and at the VA, my pharmacy mentor is Dr. Renee Smith, who's the chief of pharmacy. Um, you'll see other interests well, within my research, and I'm very passionate about my profession, um, so I'll always kind of push to get pharmacists involved, um, get you know, other clinicians to think about involving pharmacists in their clinical research. Um, so outside non-academic area of interest, it's a healthy interest in craft beer. Um, <laughs> Birmingham is perfect for that. Uh, my favorite children's, children's book is also The Giving Tree. Um, my name's Kaylee Burnham. I got married two weeks ago, so I want to change my name. She was Kaylee Burnham Crockett. Any um, I uh, am a new um, postdoctoral T32 fellow. I recently finished my PhD in clinical psychology at the University of Connecticut, so I have much respect for New England fans. Um, <laughs> my primary mentors on T32 are Janet Tron and Lula Tron. Um, my broad area of research interest is social stress and health, specifically I'm interested in HIV stigma and sometimes health behavior mental health and physical health outcomes. Um, my non-academic areas of interest um, are yoga, cooking, and my dog guts. And my favorite children's books were anything by Dr. Seuss and Sean Silverstein growing up, so I'll name Where the Sidewalk Ends is one of my favorites. Hey, I'm Sam. Sam here. I'm a third year general surgery resident, uh, VA quality scholar, first year fellow. Uh, my mentors are Dr. Melanie Morris and the VA faculty uh, for the quality scholar, Dr. Dr. Estrada. My um, academic area of uh, research is through the VA looking at readmissions and related to surgery, specifically looking at health literacy. And then also I have an interest in surgical education, currently getting a master's in education for health professionals. Um, my non-academic interests um, are competitive weightlifting. And then my favorite children's book um, is One Fish, Two Fish, Red Fish, Blue Fish. <laughs> Gabrielle, Gabrielle. Um, yes, I'm Gabrielle Oates. I'm an instructor in the Division of Preventive Medicine uh, and just started my second year in the K-12 award. Uh, my research is on social determinants of health and appearance in chronic uh, diseases with a focus on chronic respiratory conditions. Um, I'm being mentored by Sarah Knight, uh, Mark Dransfield uh, as a COPD content mentor, uh, Paul Munger, and uh, Mona Huat. Uh, Non-academic <laughs> interests, I used to have these. <laughs> <laughs> I had to dig deep down. Um, in my previous life, I was a linguist and a translator, so I still hold those areas dear to my heart and fellow pianist uh, as well. Uh, right now, my interests are relating to teenagers. Um, it's a second full time job. Um, and I very much enjoy Friday mornings. Just like, not from the barrel. Children's book? Children's book. Wow, wow, we're at pajama. <laughs> <laughs> now, Dr. Sag is going to. Sam, so everybody's in there. Right. No, no. <laughs> did we did did everybody get to say something? Did we miss anybody? One real quick thing with Brian, because we'll see Brian. Brian, Brian yes, <laughs> Brian, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> so first of all, by the way, we don't we don't do this every time, so don't don't feel like you have to put your makeup on or put your makeup on. We're just 
doing this for this one. Um, <laughs> so my name is Brian Wallace. Uh, originally came in, I'm with CCTF. I originally came in as communications director and then took a hard left and basically handled some projects, uh, including Kaizen, if you've heard of Kaizen. Uh, we're developing an app for that, and that takes up a lot of my time, as well as uh, i uh, and doing a lot with our i program as it grows, uh, as well as in the evaluation space, both with common metrics, and we have some openings now, and so I'm going to be doing some interim evaluation work while that changes. Um, my mentors are my children, because I learn more from them than I probably would from anybody in the entire world. I have seven, so uh, I have stair-stepped from very old to very young, and so it's... <laughs> I'd learn more from them than anybody else. Uh, my research area would probably be uh, figuring out uh, how to convince my teenagers that I do know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> my non-academic area of interest uh, would be sports, everything related to sports. I'm not like a stats guy, but I love watching my sports. Uh, and I hate children's books because I've read too many of them. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have a favorite, and I'm good with that. <laughs> Brian, you're a tough act to follow. <laughs> Anybody else at Tulane that we haven't heard from? Anybody join us? Okay, well, great. Uh, that was terrific. Really, that was phenomenal. What a group. What an eclectic group. And just growing, and this program is just taken off. It's really a pleasure for me. I'm Ken Sag. I'm the uh, director and the PI of the T32 and the K12 from ARC and the CTSA uh, TL1 and KL2. And the reason I'm able to do that is I have great help. You've met several of the people here. There are several others who are going to be engaged. Uh, so it's, it's really a team sport to, to do this. And this training program has really been one of the, the jewels at UAB. So I think before going on, I just want you guys to all give yourselves a hand because this is a this is our most diverse and uh, terrific group that we've had. So welcome all of you. So my area is rheumatology. I do epi and outcomes in rheumatology, and I think as you heard from from David Chaplin, uh, even when we get a little more senior, we all still need mentors. I was fortunate when I came here to work with Katerina Kifa and Norm Weissman, who have either retired or moved on to other positions, but I continue to uh, take counsel and get mentoring from people like Seth Landefeld and Bob Kimberly and, and David and, and others here in the room. So it's important throughout our career to have that. Um, my uh, non-academic interests uh, used to be taking care and helping raise three girls. They've all grown up, so now we're down to three dogs. And if you uh, can stop by tomorrow night, you can meet our, our new puppy, Piper, who is a, a nine-week-old uh, golden doodle. So you can, can help me train Piper. But uh, we look forward to seeing many of you tomorrow night. And uh, uh, David stole my thunder on Good Night Moon because that was uh, the one that we used to enjoy reading to the kids a lot. So it's really um, terrific to have these sessions. I think you'll find a nice mix of things that are focused on career building, things that are a little more didactic, that complement things that you may be doing in the classroom, and particularly an opportunity for you to present your works in progress. This is a forum where you should feel good about bringing things that you're working on. We want you to bring your mentors and your co-mentors. We were talking earlier today, we're going to really make a concerted effort to bring in a lot of methodologists to these sessions so that you can get feedback on the things you're working on. And it's the idea is to have a very non-threatening forum where you can get feedback from one another. And I hope the thing that you appreciated as we went around the room is a tremendous number of different disciplines that are represented here. And that's really by design. We, we are trying to make this a truly interdisciplinary program in uh, clinical outcomes, effectiveness, health services research, pick whatever term you like to use to, to describe the umbrella for the things we're doing, but it's definitely uh, very nicely represented in this year's group. So I'm going to let Ryan um, do a little bit of an introduction. I think I would be remiss, uh, and, and I'll have more to say tomorrow, uh, you know, we call this uh, the, the, the meeting tomorrow, the social gathering is hails and farewells. It's really an opportunity to get together informally and get to know one another better, and this was a great start. 
But I'd be remiss to not uh, note that um, Ryan is going to be moving on. Ryan has taken a position uh, in the uh, Division of Hematology and Oncology as the Division Administrator. And, you know, one of the things we do in training is we work not just with our faculty and our postdocs and our fellows, but we want our staff to be able to advance in their careers. And so we're very excited for Ryan that he has an opportunity to move into a new um, area and have some new challenges here at UAB. They'll obviously be exceptionally difficult <laughs> to replace, a huge shoes to fill. And uh, I'm really delighted to have had a chance over the past 10 years to, to work with Ryan, both in my research program and in this uh, tremendous training environment. So stay tuned, another reason to uh, come by tomorrow night. Uh, but I want to turn it over to Ryan, who's uh, taken on a huge leadership role in, in our training program, and we'll provide the introduction again today. So thank you. Let me get you set, Ryan. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, everybody. Live television. All right. Thank you. All right. This is meant to be, as uh, many of our fellows meetings are, to be very informal. So if you have questions, uh, please ask them. If, as current and former trainees and mentors, if um, you want to add your experiences or build on anything I say, please, please do so. So we went through the introductions. Just as a reminder, so here are the five funding sources that feed into this program. Again, it speaks to the diversity uh, of folks that we've got around the table every Friday. And so we've got the ARC T32, which as you heard, supports both pre-docs on the PhD side and the postdocs, which are MDs and PhDs. We've got the CCTS T01, which is funded by NCATS. These are pre-doctoral trainees that have a clinical focus of the training. So we've got med students, we've got MD PhD students uh, at Tulane and here at UAB, but also there's potential for opportunities elsewhere. Uh, there's an opportunity for pharmacy students from Auburn to be able to be part of it. And then we also broaden it to include uh, clinical psychology students from here um, at UAB. We've got the VA Quality Scholars Program that uh, Dr. Patricia leads with Dr. Estrada, uh, Elise and Sam are part of that uh, program. And then we've got a variety of different centers and department fellowships. So NADA with the Rheumatology T32, we've been able to use some institutional funds to help uh, Laura with where she's going. So we kind of bring in the whole umbrella of anyone doing health services research. Uh, and then we've got the ARC, the Core K-12, and the CCTS KL2. These are for junior faculties. Um, and they will routinely attend both to uh, for their career development, but then also to provide some insight as someone that's a little bit further down the career path. The main thing I want you to take home from this is if you are working with someone, this is a open forum. So we only benefit by having more and more trainees around the table, more and more faculty. Please bring them along. Anyone in your program, even if they're not funded, it's great to have them here. We love having a packed room. It just makes for a richer uh, experience. And the same thing goes at Tulane. With Tulane and with some of our trainees that have to be able to work remotely, we do have the opportunity to provide this through GoToMeeting. So if you're at a conference, if you have to be out for an extended period of time, happy to do that. And again, we're becoming more and more facile with being able to do that and make sure you're engaged. And again, it just allows us to further uh, uh, broaden the scope of people that we're able to touch. Um, so here's the training program leadership. I like to think of them as the giving tree. They very much give, give, give. Um, and they're phenomenal, and this doesn't fully capture everyone, but I've been very impressed in my 10 years here of how open everyone is and willing to give up their time. Um, so it's on you if you don't take advantage of it. Um, there's people, even if they're not your mentors, that are willing to take the time out to help give advice on a project, on a career, on anything. Uh, so definitely take advantage of the leadership. And again, this doesn't capture everyone. This just kind of gives a highlight. Each Friday, oftentimes, we'll have multiple faculty here. Grab them afterwards. Whatever you need to do, um, just take advantage of this to help you with your career. Uh, past trade needs. So the places you'll go. So this is a common thing. So <laughs> where do people end up? And so this is not a full thing, but it kind of lets you know. So two of our recent, so you can see Carice, who was on the ARC T32. Um, she's now health economist at the CDC. 
Uh, we've got Gabe just recently uh, transitioned to Temple University. Tori finished hers and went right into a position at Ohio State. Um, Greer, who's here, is now on a K-23. She transitioned to a professor here. Megan Ryder, uh, who's a clinical psychologist, actually did her training at UA Tuscaloosa, went back home but is at Arizona State and is doing phenomenal. Uh, David is now in uh, Mississippi State and has kind of returned to his passion, which is community extension work uh, and really helping the community that way. Uh, Kelly has transitioned to a professor here. She came to us from the University of Florida. She's got a PhD. Happy. She'll often be here on Fridays. Mercedes um, is on a diversity scholarship and is now down at UA Tuscaloosa helping build relationships with them. Michelle's down at uh, Auburn. Uh, and then from the VA Quality Scholar Program, you've got Rebecca, who's here, uh, and she goes by Susie, uh, who's here at the School of Nursing. And then Jeremiah is actually down in Austin, down by you all in Tulane. Uh, one that's not here, uh, Charlotte Jones, who is on the T32, is now at the FDA. So our trainees go to a lot of variety of different things. And again, they're very open. Um, they're very busy, but historically they've been very open to say, hey, how can we help you? So Carice helped uh, Prachi Bodnicker, who was on the T01, who's interested in a CDC fellowship. Um, and so anything that we can do as a program to help you kind of explore careers, uh, please let us know. Um, so the Alumni Council, I like to think of them as the Order of the Phoenix. Um, <laughs> this is another resource. Again, sometimes it can be scary to approach uh, the leadership because you don't want to act like, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So this is another group that you can connect with um, if you've got questions. And again, it's work-life balance stuff. It's research. It's the career development. Take advantage of it. You've got such a huge different group to kind of explore different research areas, different disciplines. Uh, and this is for everyone. It doesn't matter what your funding source is. Uh, um, and we can work with you to help connect with those. And so um, Anand, who didn't really mention, just finished the T32, is now on the PCOR K-12. Um, we've had multiple folks like uh, Monica and John. They finished their T32 transition to an F31. A lot of different opportunities. Uh, so what do people do all day? <laughs> so mentored research experience. If you're not aware of that, then I didn't do my job. Um, so it's a mentoring team. And again, most of you will have a primary mentor, but I think as you heard, it's a team uh, that is helping you because one person is very good, but having other opinions is very helpful as well. So building out that team. And then you should be leading projects. You should be working with your mentors on their projects and doing it, but you should have something that you're taking advantage of. That's what the T32, the T01, and these other aspects are for is to make it for you to transition to independence. For most of you, we hope that you transition to independence and academic career. But again, we've got some of the CDC, we've got people at the FDA, we've got people on a variety of different careers. We want you to build the skills so you're the one leading uh, the charge. Um, you, you can see the variety of different uh, areas that we deal in this. Core competencies, these are obtained through seminars, conferences, short-term rotations, we'll, I'll get to in a second, and then your independent research. But these are the skills you need to be able to move forward and be able to conduct the type of research that you're doing. And then degree programs. So um, for the, the pre-docs, obviously, um, and I'll go into more detail, you're going for your dissertation. For the TL1 folks, you're uh, completing either the PhD part of your MD-PhD or you're getting a master's degree uh, over in outcomes research in the School of Public Health. For our MD uh, T32 postdocs, you're likely going to be getting a master's. So again, broaden your skill set. Uh, for the PhD, you're supplementing with other coursework. And then there's the university-wide seminars and conferences as well. We'll get to in a second. So here are the rotations, search on rotations, many sabbaticals. Um, this is not an exhaustive list, and a lot of them really are an opportunity for you to think about something that you can create for yourself. What these are meant to do is address a skill that you can't address here. So it may be an opportunity to go collaborate with someone else in another institution, to learn a methodological approach, to learn what it's like to work in a certain setting. Um, so one example of that would be working with um, a Kaiser Permanente. We're working with them to set up one in the mid-Atlantic states. Um, the other benefit of this is there's an opportunity through the CCTS to get some funding for this. There's a mini sabbatical program. Uh, Dr. Sag and I, uh, we recently got an admin supplement through the CCTS to kind of build a national catalog working with NYU, um, Massachusetts, and Rochester to kind of build a catalog, not just for us, but for the whole uh, nation. 
Um, so I like to think of everything we've got as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You got the Everlasting Gallop Stopper. You got all the other Chocolate River, which I would have been goosed off and fallen in. Um, so just to kind of give you a sense of, and uh, both here and there's very similar things down at Tulane. You've got over 30 primary mentors. You've got associate mentors, so these are people that have career development awards. And then you've got all these different university research centers available to you. Um, again, it's on you to take advantage of this, but use us to help you take advantage of it. So if there's things that you're trying to learn, there is a center on this campus, um, and there's similar uh, components at Tulane for every kind of patient population for every disease focus, for different methodological approaches. So this is your opportunity to kind of explore and see where you want to go. So academic tracks, I talked about this uh, briefly. So we've got the MSPH, there's the MS and Outcomes down at Tulane. Uh, here's the different PhD programs that feed into our various programs. Uh, oftentimes the, the VAX folks will take a MSPH and clinical research program. And then again, if you're on a T or a T32, you've got tuition funds to be able to take advantage of those supplemental coursework. Those can't be used for anything else. Um, so they, they're lost if you don't take advantage of it. So this is an opportunity, again, to work and try different courses, learn different methodologies and approaches. So training programs. And I like to think of this as Sam and the Green A's and Ham. Because it's like, I don't like this, I don't want this, I've got all these other reasons. But I guarantee you, if you like it, or if you try it, you will like it. Um, I can't stress this enough, and I will say this is the one thing that our trainees don't take full advantage of. You've got dedicated time from these training grants. Go to seminars, go to workshops, go to presentations. You'll be hard-pressed to not walk away with no one nugget. Even if it's not related to your research, you may learn an approach of how to present data, how to present information. Or you might even say, boy, that didn't make any sense. I'm not going to do that when I present. This is your time to be able to go and explore and take advantage of these different opportunities that you see here. Make sure you're on our listserv. Eve's phenomenal. If you're not getting the emails for the fellows, um, make sure you get the email to Eve. Uh, the other one I would recommend for both sites is being able to be connected to the CCTS uh, membership. That will let you be aware of the more broader thing. Again, if you're doing AIDS research, connect with the CIFAR, Center for AIDS Research, to find out what they're doing. If you're doing diabetes, Comprehensive Diabetes Center. Again, for all those things, to find out what those seminars are and learn uh, what's going on at this campus, and it provides opportunities for networking. It's easy to stay in your office and be like, oh, I don't want to walk over there. <laughs> Get out. Interact. Hold each other accountable. More than anything else, they often have free lunch. So, um, so the fellows meetings, what are these? What are these for? So they're for career and research development. Okay? So that's where we take advantage of the leadership. Last week we had Tanette down at Tulane present on mentoring. We'll bring other folks in remotely to talk about career development skills, to talk about research skills. Dr. Sag mentioned, um, Ken mentioned the methodology talks. That's going to be it. The other half of the time, it's you all. It's you presenting your work to get feedback, to address any barriers, have, any concerns. What can we do as a program to help you advance your science? Um, to make the most of that, invite your mentors so that they can hear the discussion. They can help support you. Invite your biostatistician or methodologist, so if you're working with one, bring them so they can chime in, but they can also understand or address any questions. And then work with us. Work with Eve, work with Muggs, work with Ken, work with others to ask who else would be good to make sure they're around the table. Again, more often than not, people are very giving of their time. Plus, we give the coffee, we have the carbs. Okay? So now, when you present, you may get some goosebumps. But if that happens, just remember the old trick. Remember everyone in their camped in underpants. <laughs> this is the other thing. Next time you're afraid to share ideas, remember someone once said in a meeting, let's make a film with a tornado full of sharks. <laughs> the takeaway from this is, this is an informal, safe place. Ask questions. Engage. If something doesn't make sense, just ask. Chime in. 
The best thing about this program is you guys helping each other. And that doesn't work if you don't show up, and it doesn't work if you don't participate. And again, we work very hard to make sure the folks at Tulane, Justin often joins us remotely from Montgomery, Matt New joins us from Huntsville. We work hard to make sure everyone's able to participate and chime in because each of you have something valuable to add to the discussion. Uh, so other structured educational opportunities you can see here, again, if you give a dog a donut, most of these have food, uh, and most of them are open. You don't have to RSVP. Again, we like having packed rooms. So you'll see flyers up, you'll see emails. I'm going to keep hammering over the head. This is your time to be able to take advantage of this. You can ask the senior faculty. Once you start having your R grants and other things, it's a little bit more challenging to be able to break away. Um, but I think you will find, again, more often than not, you'll be able to walk away with at least one nugget, if not more. And sometimes there's chicken nuggets there, so you can take those <laughs> with you. Um, products. <clears throat> so what do you do with an idea? So you've got one or three research projects. Again, to pair it, you know, it's, for the TL1 folks that you're taking a break from med school, it's a little challenging. You're more likely joining a mentor and you're working through. But you're still going to have those opportunities. We've had trainings. We've had summer trainings that have been able to do publications. Part of it is on you, driving your mentors. Say, hey, what can we do? What's the opportunity? Where can we present? What's the timeline for this publication? For folks that are doing the pre-doc uh, T32, our main goal is for by the end of the T32, you have your dissertation, you've got your PhD. But many of you will walk out with multiple other publications and other opportunities, as you've seen with Monica and John being able, and Christy, actually, Christy Stringer, to be able to transition to an F31. Um, and so that goes with this last bullet. You have to figure out with your mentors what's the next step for you. Um, what makes the most sense. And for some of you in the T32 postdocs, it may be going for an R series award. But that's what you need to be already thinking through. And I don't mean that to make you anxious. It's just that's the reality of how it is. Um, you've got to always be thinking of that next step. But help us think through. That's part of what the presentations are for as well. And just to be clear, those presentations, uh, Eve does a phenomenal job. It's, it's herding cats sometimes. Um, but um, we'll get you all in. Whether you're on the T, the T, T32, the TL1, if we're supporting you and you're sh showing up every week, we're happy to have you be part of the fold to present. We have people come back to present, to practice presentations. Um, that's the key thing. So there's going to be days where you've got a horrible, no good, very bad day. So then what do you do? So helping you meet your goals. Again, Part of it is meeting here, being here. Some of the best discussions happen after 9.30. It's pulling each other aside, it's pulling a faculty aside, and it's setting up, it's walking up to Lucy's, it's going to Starbucks, it's going wherever to have those discussions. But part of it is also during the time. Meeting with a statistician, and this could be someone that you've already got, but I'd also encourage you to take advantage of the methodological expertise that we've got with David Redden, with Emily Levitan, and with others that are routinely here to meet with them and get a second set of eyes. They're very, very, very giving of the time. If you don't take advantage of it, that's on you. Um, they don't turn people away. I've been very overwhelmed with their ability to be open with their time. You all, uh, soon after today, I will be sending out a mentoring contract. Some of you have already gotten this. Some of you that are continuing on or as part of the application process. This is meant to be a two-way contract. What are you expecting from your mentoring team, and what are they expecting for you? And this is setting up goals. You figure out what the timeline is. I wouldn't go beyond six months, but you figure out what's the timeline. What are we trying to accomplish in the next six months? What are we trying to accomplish in the next three months, and how are we going to get here? How are we going to use our time together? So we're meeting every week. What are we going to discuss? What do you want me to do? It goes back to what uh, uh, Dr. Crossell Wood mentioned last week. It's being an active participant as far as a mentee. So you, and you've got plenty of mentors around the table, have those discussions. How are we going to structure it? Hopefully many of you already have, but again, it can evolve over time. As you become more and more independent, your needs may change. So just keep that in mind. And I've already mentioned the core competencies. The other uh, way forward is the CCTS Partner Network. So these are the 11 institutions that are part of the CCTS Partner Network. Again, Bob Kimberly, who was here earlier, is the overall director. 
Uh, David is the director of the training academy. Ken has the T and the K, and then um, uh, Dr. Crossell Wood is the co-PI down at the Tulane one. All of these folks are very open to working. We're still building bridges, but we have bridges in place. We're just trying to make them from two lanes to four lanes and super highways. Um, but this is another resource. If you're trying to find potential participants for research studies, if you're looking for potential mentors, work with the CCTS. Jeffrey Crocker, who's my colleague who couldn't be with us today, is phenomenal. She leads the research comments. She's very knowledgeable both about UAB but elsewhere. Rachel down at Tulane has been phenomenal to work with. I, I don't use that word loosely. I, I mean it. Um, she's a tremendous resource for you down at Tulane, but she's another resource if you're trying to work and collaborate with someone down there to work through. Um, just, again, another resource to make sure you take advantage of. So if you're ever trying to figure out what kind of fish to use or how many fish to use, use the bird. So this is the Biostatistics Epidemiology Research Design. David Redden uses this, as leads this. This is a weekly drop-in clinic. Every Wednesday in here, you can just drop in. They provide lunch again. We're big about food, so for some of you that are eaters. Um, um, so take advantage of this. They also have office hours. Uh, David Redden couldn't be here today because he he's got the orientation with public health, but almost every Friday he's got office hours here. All you have to do is email ccts at uab.edu. It's a 24-7 inbox, and we'll get someone connected with you. And they'll connect you not just with CCTS resources, but other resources on campus. So there's no reason to not be able to have help. The key thing I will say that uh, David and Emily would speak to, and many others here, earlier is better than later. So if you're stuck, if you're planning a grant, meet with these folks. So, project panels. Uh, the CCTS does this, and these are exceptionally helpful in getting a fresh set of eyes to help you identify potential issues before you submit. The panel process has currently, the last time I was aware of the thing, 50% of the grants that go through the panel process get funded. Um, these are for every type of award. We've done them for F awards. We've done them for K awards. We've done them for P series. We've done them for R series. We've done them for American Cancer Society. We do it for everything. So there's, and it's, again, open to everyone. Jean, if she's still here, and Angie, uh, co-lead this effort. They help build the team. You give them the aims, and they figure out the experts to get around the table. And then they do an amazing job in a 24-hour period turning around giving you a transcript of everything that was discussed. Um, so this is a resource, again, for you, for your mentors, for other people you work with. It is for everyone, and it's camp, it's partner network-wide as well. We've done these uh, through Skype to be able to take advantage of the expertise that the partner network has to bring in folks to help chime in. So there's no reason that this can't be taken advantage of by anybody. And it's a simple email to ccts at uab.edu. I'd like to do a panel for this grant and uh, Gene and Angie will work with you. Uh, just some other SIPs, MR series. We've got the tiers. This is more for the junior faculty, but it's open again to everyone. Uh, it's the third Thursday of every month. This is, again, big picture. Uh, career development, uh, grantsmanship, leadership skills, a variety of different things. It's meant to be similar to what we focus on here in the fellows meeting is disease and discipline agnostic. So it's meant to be for everyone to kind of learn from each other. And it's an opportunity at the junior faculty level um, for a learning community, but that's open as well for postdocs and pre-docs as well. Case studies and mentoring, uh, David Chaplin uh, chairs these. Uh, we just kicked this off. We're about halfway through the first cycle. These are eight sessions right now. They're happening on Mondays at noon. Eight Sorry, Fridays at noon, Mondays at 8 o'clock. Um, it, we've done it as a series, so you don't have to go each time. If you want to, that's great. But it's given some flexibility for you to be able to attend over time, and we repeat the, uh, the topics, uh, the case studies, every 10 weeks. Um, but it's always a new group, so there's always going to be some new discussion that goes along from different experiences. So for today, for example, the topic is um, diverse, dealing with diversity and um, equity within your research group, that kind of topic. And again, it's campus-wide. Meeting also? 
We haven't done that yet. It's the first time through, and we've just felt like face to face was better. And we're so far the groups have been eight to twelve people, and we probably can't handle more than fifteen at a time. But you can just stop them and try to have you. Um, and we're happy to keep growing. And we are figuring out for folks at Tulane and other partner networks that are all in Tuscaloosa how to kind of build it out from there as well. So. Uh, IDP, these were my favorite series of books growing up, was the Choose Your Own Adventure books. Um, and I kind of think of that's what the IDP is. This is for you to kind of think through what's your training going to be, what do you need to develop, and what's the plan for doing that. Um, and there's the link, and I'll share this link for you to be thinking about. There's other resources available. Talk with your mentors. Um, and again, it's thinking through uh, what's the plan for the next six months, the next 12 months. And parts of it, you've got self-assessment career exploration, you write the IDP and then you implement and evaluate. So the self-assessment, evaluate your skills, think about your values, your interests, and then you identify your strengths and areas that need improvement. And then the key thing is getting feedback. So it doesn't do any good for you to do it and just share it to yourself. Work with your peers and mentors to do it. So the core competencies, uh, you can see here, I won't read them, but thinking about what do you need to do to again become that independent investigator or independent uh, whatever field you choose uh, to be successful with that. Skills assessment, so identify the skills that you're proficient and those that need work. Uh, and then identify the three, three skills that you'd like to work on improving. Uh, and again, this should not be, okay, I'm in my day one of my T32, I do two years of a postdoc and then I look at it again. This would be every six months or more frequently to make sure you're on target to complete things. Values, this is, a, again, for me, it's thinking about the work-life balance. What do you need to do to be happy? What do you need to be passionate about? Um, there's what's important. Um, it's key to identifying the environment in which you're going to thrive personally and professionally. Um, and it's often underestimated in choosing a career path or job. I know some of you are already starting to look at jobs. That's part of it. Do they have an environment where you're going to be successful? More importantly, is it going to be an environment you can be happy? They can be wildly successful, but are you going to be successful? Does it have everything you need? And it's not just work. It's the work-life balance. Do they have a ballroom club? You know? Do they have a volunteer band like you <clears throat> down to like? What do you need to be happy? Because if you're not happy, that's not going to be good for the institution either. Um, so an interest inventory, think about what you enjoy doing, what keeps you up at night in a good way. Uh, identify your top three interests and then identify the three activities you would not like to do in the future. And again, that IDP website will walk you through. Um, and then this is the intersection for your career satisfaction. So career exploration, uh, identify realistic career opportunities. So what is your degree going to be able to provide you? Uh, the opportunity to do, determine what skills you need for those choices, and then compare with your skills, and then figure out where the uh, training is needed. Career resources, again, the one that I would highlight the most here is your mentors. They're where you hopefully want to go, so work with them. Think with them uh, of uh, what you need to do to be successful. Take advantage of folks that are two or three steps ahead of you. So people like Anon, who was in a, a pulmonary fellowship and now is faculty, how did he get there? Uh, take advantage of people around this table, but also around your, your home units as far as departments, centers, and divisions. Uh, scientific meetings. Part of this, again, is an opportunity for you to make a goal to expand your network. Look in advance who's doing similar research. Uh, I have found for myself poster sessions are nice because they're opportunities for those sidebar discussions to both learn about the research but also kind of pick their brain of where things are going. Uh, go to the exhibits, attend special interest meetings. This is a thing, and, and Mud speaks to this often, this is another opportunity to explore. So explore the opportunities here as far as seminars and workshops, but also you've got travel funds. What are some different conferences that you might go to um, to kind of see what else is going on? I don't know if you'd want to expand on that. I'll put you on the spot. Sure. No, I, mean, I think you know the folks in T32 will have the annual meeting before ARM, which is a great opportunity to get together and network and meet folks. But I think along these lines, a lot of conferences will have pre-conference symposia for trainees, workshops, those things that can be incredibly valuable and would encourage doing that. I think to echo Ryan's you know, comments, 
um, being in the HSR, OER, T3, T4, Pop Health, whatever you want to call it, space, I think we tend to have a community that is, by and large, engaging and approachable. So when you're at a big meeting, even if this is the big person whose papers have inspired you over the course of your training to get to where you are, go and talk with them. I mean, more often than not, these folks are incredibly approachable. If they're not, you'll know it quickly. And you'll know that it's not someone you can go to. But in my experience, is more often than not, some of these folks who you might think have on this pedestal are just people and really approachable and would really encourage you and a lot of times can develop additional relationships beyond the UAB community that can be incredibly valuable uh, over the course of your career. I'm going to pause here just because I've been rambling. Um, other feedbacks from mentors around the table, um, Trainings, anything else people want to kind of build on that I've mentioned thus far or other? I actually do. Um, about like interest and where you're going, like I think you mentioned it, like you have to be happy. So if you're measurable in what you're working on, talk to your mentors and switch projects. Like don't, I mean, I don't know, you may have better advice, but like a year ago I was miserable with what <laughs> I was doing. I kind of stuck with it for a little while, but then went to Ryan and he helped me kind of and something else. So don't feel like you have to stick with something you're not happy with. Uh, yeah, uh, go ahead. Yeah. I'm not going to expand on it. This happens. Likely one of you are not going to be happy with your mentor. It is a hard situation to be. That's why we, the, the leaders of the training program are your marriage counselor. They can bring out <laughs> that relationship very nicely without you needing to confront your mentor. So we do that all the time. Uh, so if you're not happy, if it's not working out, that's where you go to the leadership. And really, it is marriage counseling. Yeah, I, I, just, I would totally agree with that. And I think you'll see more, more often than not on Fridays, Emily Levitan and Effie, Sarah and I, you know, Matt Benson and I will be here and are very all available, you know, to work with you and talk with you. So I think we do the training program, you know, and Ryan has done such an incredible job and, um, you know, I think we'll take a more expanded role in the transition period, but providing a structure and a framework to provide resources for you to be successful in collaboration and partnership with your mentor. So this is, you know, a team and a lot of times what we aim to do is provide this environment and structure um, that integrates, synergizes, and at times might even enhance. Sometimes in your environment there might not be immediate resources that we as a training program can try to provide. Um, so I think those are things that we look to do um, and content size enough, showing up matters. Get out of your office. I mean, you will get so much more. I have gotten, I should say, I've gotten so much more the last two years out of sitting here hearing Kelly Kendrick talk about competing risks, hearing someone talk about how they sample the hard-to-reach community you know, in, in, uh, you know, in rural Alabama. So I think to really take advantage um, and, and get out and go to these seminars, even if the topic looks way off, you know, content-wise, there's something in design, evaluation approach that you will likely walk away with. Um, and kind of size enough, too, I think that ultimately you all have to be the driver of this. This is, this is an incredibly unique opportunity when you're in your kind of, you know, T32 space, TL1 space. So we just encourage you to maximize this time, and I don't know if you want to speak to, I mean, you know, and, and you know, this, this time goes by so quickly, um, and it, it gives you a chance to really kind of pursue and do things that become harder as you, as you move along. Yeah, the, the Friday morning presentations and actually participating and giving the presentation was extremely helpful to force yourself to maybe present a not so refined topic and have people around the table look at your PowerPoint for that figure is way too small, or that color is not readable, you know, that doesn't project well. I actually use that several times, because you will be required to do that before your national meetings. Surgeons would do it before the national surgery meeting, and for us it was for the NRSA, for the NRSA meeting and for Academy Health. So I would say take full advantage of that, because not only do you get presentation etiquette, but the ideas that can shape your manuscript changes, because we were actually, you know, going down different ways and solidifying aims. So those were huge. Uh, even though they might seem small, they were actually incredibly influential in sort of the two years during your, during your time. Two more brief comments. One is, the, and Pat is here every week with the bats, and then the synergy with the bats. I'm sorry, Pat, I meant to say, it's really 
mostly, I think me and you and Emily and Sarah, the folks will be here most frequently and, and all I think available and in, to engage. And then also work really closely with, you know, with Gene and the panels and David Redman and the Burger League, the frequent speaker here. So part of what we aim to do within the training program is to help you maybe connect some dots, you know, to really take advantage of this long list of resources that are available. Um, and that's kind of like what we see as our role and, and what we aim to do. Yeah, the two mechanisms for that, again, is presenting so we can know what you're doing, but you being the driver of after the meetings, <clears throat> hey, I'm stuck here. Um, I can't say it enough. It's very much an open door policy, uh, and these folks are willing to work through it. Like what Dr. Scrincy said, you're, this isn't the first time. There's been other people that have struggled. Uh, and just because one person was successful with a mentor doesn't mean you're going to be successful. It's it's a, it's a relationship, and that doesn't mean anything about you. You've just got to figure out the right fit for you. Um, and time so quick that you can't let it go six months. You've got to work through. I mean, you don't want to do it day one, <laughs> but you've got to work through and be like, you know what, this doesn't feel right. And if you can't have that discussion with the mentor first, take advantage of this. And that's where the alumni council comes in very handy as well. So I'm going to quickly do some of this stuff. So just, you know, write the IDP. Obviously, that's getting out the plan, figuring out where you want to go, setting your personal go goals of kind of where you want to uh, accomplish things, refer back to the skills assessment that you did, think about what's needed for your job, uh, and then set your personal improvement goals uh, for the areas that need improvement, and then specify the time. That's the key thing. Deadlines, deadlines, deadlines. Um, figuring out what you can do. And it's okay to miss a deadline, but you need to have it first, and then figure out what it needs to move things forward. And then implement your plan, put it into action. Revise the plan as necessary, review the plan and progress with your mentor regularly. That's the key again. You can't just have it uh, languishing around. And a formal document helpful. And I think what most trainees have found helpful is this is a specific meeting. So it's not to talk about your research and what's going on with that and the IRB and all this stuff. This is a focused thing of let's take a step back. How are things going? How are things going with the project? How are things going with the career development? How are things going with work-life balance? All those types of things and having a very focused, targeted meeting related to that. And again, this is for TL1s that are doing it for a year, the T3s who post doing doing for two years is when the VA Quality Scholars, and the pre-docs that are doing it for three years. Each of you have different needs and goals and plans, uh, so you need to figure out what works best for you. Most of the mentors within these programs will be used to doing this, but Occasionally, you'll come up against a mentor who's never done this before because it's a sort of emerging, evolving set of expectations what the relationship ought to be. And if you encounter that, you know, suggest that you bring in a sort of a career development mentor as part of your team, and we'll help you find that if you need it. So I'm aware of within certain divisions, they do six-month check-ins where they've got the mentor team, but then again, they bring in the division director, they bring in other <clears throat> folks. Uh, so Ken Sag and his role as the director of the Outcome Center will join for trainees that have, or faculty that have a health services focus to provide those different perspectives. But the key thing is get everyone around the table at once. Because it can be very challenging if you've got a mentoring team and the teams don't get together. Your primary mentor is telling you one thing, your co-mentor is telling this other thing, the methodologist is telling you this. <laughs> And you're like, yes, 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 and it's whoever said it last. you got to get them all together. Um, and I will say this. If you've got a mentor that's not making the time to meet with you, they're not a good mentor. Um, they may be phenomenal with their funding, and they may look very good on paper, but if they're not meeting with you and helping you guide, you need somebody else, and that's where, again, to take advantage of the leadership. So timeline. Um, most of the stuff many of you are already doing, but again, just to kind of you know meet with them often. Eve will work with you to set up a meeting with either uh, here at UAB to meet with Ken Sack to make sure things are progressing forward. Um, the folks at Tulane will meet with Dr. Carlson Wood just to get a check-in. Um, and we may kind of share it just to make it go as quick as possible to meet with um, Muggs and others. Eve will be working with you to get you scheduled to give a brief presentation. This is an introduction, a further introduction of the research, 10 to 15 minutes. What are you trying to do? 
Part of the reason for doing this is Kelly Kensick, who's great. She was doing SEER Medicare data. Two-year postdoc, she never got the data within those two years because it took that long to do it. And so part of it is presenting and be like, you can do it, but what else are you going to do while you're waiting for the data? So that's the thing, taking advantage of this expertise. Oh, I'm going to go out in the community and recruit 300 people, and I'm going to do it in six months. It's like, <laughs> Andrew Chairman be like, sure, let's go ahead and revisit that timeline. Those types of things, you're young, you're excited, that's what we want. Now, how do we make sure that you don't get uh, disenfranchised because things don't go as smoothly as you hope? And the year will be, go by quickly. Every six months, you're going to do a progress report. This is both to make sure you're on track, but also we need to include it with our progress report to our funding agency to show what we're doing. Uh, and then it also kind of sets up that next year. Um, so, but we also want feedback. How are we doing? How are your mentors doing? Uh, and then we're trying to figure out how you're doing. Um, the one thing that um, I will say, your success is our success. If you all are not successful, we will not be successful. What I mean by that is we will not be refunded. So it's not all altruistic. We're selfish. We want to keep being able to do this. But we also enjoy seeing what you do. So again, take advantage of that. Before I go on to the next thing, I'm going to pause and let Andrea introduce herself. So we did who we are, mentors, research area, non-academic interests, and favorite children's book. Um, I'm not sure I remember all that. I'm Andrea Charrington. I'm in the Division of Preventive Medicine in the Department of Medicine. Um, my research interests are in and around health disparities and diabetes prevention. I do a lot of work in the community. Um, I'm an internist by training. Um, I do clinical work at Cooper Green so that my brain doesn't have to stretch and it matches my research. Um, who are my mentors? Okay. Yes. Who are my mentors? Well, actually, sitting in the room, Isabel Scarinci was one of my very first uh, mentors when I came to UAB um, and provided me great opportunities for learning about uh, doing research in the community, and I'm grateful for that. Um, Jerome Allison is another one of my sort of pivotal mentors and continues to be someone that you know I'll reach out to and see periodically. He used to be at UAB and is now at UMass. Um, at this stage, I feel like I'm... I'm relying on peers for peer mentoring a lot, you know, where uh, I'll be grappling with something and somebody at the same stage as me is grappling with something. And, um, we'll often go to each other for uh, help uh, with mentoring. Non-academic? Non-academic. Mugs are already out of here. I'm just a drive chauffeur. I'm not working. Uh, three kids, as you may have heard. Um, 12, 11, and 8, um, so that takes up pretty much all of my time. And then um, favorite children's book, I haven't really thought about that, and I didn't have a of listening to 20 people, I thought of that. Um, now I feel like I had power of suggestion, because A Wrinkle in Time is coming into my head, which was a good children's book. I'll put that as a favorite. Like all right, so your adventure, this is for you all. So I hope it takes you where the sidewalk ends, or to a bridge of Terabitha, or where the wild things are. <laughs> go where your path, go where your passion leads you. Um, there's always going to be stuff where all of us have to do things we don't enjoy. Uh, but make sure what you enjoy outweighs what you don't enjoy. So my adventure for the last five years, uh, I have been uh, had the pleasure of working with 65 predoctoral trainees, over 30 postdoctoral trainees. Uh, over 30 junior faculty. I've had countless memories, conversation, laughs, and cheers. Um, and here's the group. Um, it's been a phenomenal experience. As Dr. Sachs said, I've chosen an opportunity to expand my professional and personal development to become the division administrator for hematology and oncology. I will still work very closely with folks in here um, as much as I can. Uh, but it was time for me to move on. And so um, part of my adventure is also my kids. And these are their favorite books. So, any other things? All right. Um, we hammered home that you've got to be here every week, and we're giving you next week off. <laughs> um, 
it's a Labor Day weekend, so take advantage of that, but we'll get geared back up on the, I think it's the 8th of September. Um, the transition, again, will be as smooth as possible. You've got a phenomenal group of faculty. You've got a phenomenal person in EVE. Uh, Jeff Foster will be helping out. You saw him earlier. I don't know if he's still here. Um, the CCTS resources are, are second to none, and uh, the folks down at Tulane are, are amazing as well. So um, as much as I can, I'll still continue to be a resource, but thanks, everyone, for today, and uh, uh, be looking for some more emails from me before I make my transition. Thanks, everybody. Tomorrow, but we're all yeah. Rachel? Oh, I just Oh, thank you. So I want to take a moment uh, just to thank you personally for the last two years and how much it's been meant to me to work with you and how much I've learned from you the last two years. Um, you've left an incredible legacy here, and I think collectively all of us are going to work hard and commit to making sure we carry that on, and we'll be looking to you. Um, you know, as you transition and we're excited for your growth and what you'll bring to UAB, uh, I think all of us in this room will be looking to you going forward. And again, um, we can't thank you enough for all you've done uh, for these training programs, for all the faculty you've touched as well as all the trainees. And um, look forward to kind of trying to work with everyone in this room to keep that momentum and keep that good energy going forward. Thank you. You're dismissed, but please, mingle. <laughs>